My name is Mike Blair, and today we're going to be reading Galatians 4, 4 through 7. When the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, so that we may receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. When I think about this passage, it reminds me that God's timing is perfect. When I read the passage or when I read the section that says, when the fullness of time had come, it tells me that Jesus came at precisely the right moment in history, not a moment too early or too late. Advent is such a great season to pause and trust that God's timing in my life is just as perfect. If he orchestrated history to send his son to save us, I can trust him with the timing of my own struggles, prayers, and even my waiting. It then says God sent his son, born of a woman. Jesus came into this world just like me, fully human, experiencing the same pain, joy, and struggles that I face. That's humbling. God didn't just send help from afar. He stepped out of heaven and came to where I am. He walked in my shoes. He did it so that he could redeem me and you. But the part that hits me is where Paul says we've been adopted as God's children. Think about that for just a minute. We're not just forgiven, not just tolerated. We're family. God calls us his sons and daughters. And with that adoption comes freedom. Freedom from sin and its penalty, from fear, from shame. So often I still live as if I'm a slave, caught in guilt or doubt. But this passage tells me that that's not who I am anymore. 1 Corinthians 7, 22 through 23 says, And remember, if you were a slave when the Lord called you, you are now free in the Lord. And if you were free when the Lord called you, you are now a slave of Christ. God paid a high price for you, so don't be enslaved by the world. I have been bought at a price. I have been eternally and permanently changed. I'm a child of God, an heir to his promise, covered by Jesus' blood and redeemed by his glory and perfection. Because we're his children, we can cry out, Abba, Father. That word Abba is so personal. It's like saying dad. God doesn't want us, us to see him as a distance or un, distant or unpro, unapproachable. He is not Santa Claus who only shows up once a year. He's inviting us. No, really, he longs for us to come into, his, into a close and intimate relationship where we can bring all of our fears, joys, and burdens to him. Then how do I embrace this freedom and adoption through Advent? First, I'm choosing to rejoice in the freedom Christ has already given me. I don't carry the weight of guilt or perform for God's approval. I do not have to live under the burden and lie that my value, worth, and identity comes from my performance and people's opinions of me. My value, worth, and identity comes from Christ and Christ alone. It comes from not just a good man who died on a cross, it comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus has done it all for me. Through his blood on the cross, I can approach the Father as an heir. And in that, no matter what, the Creator, the Alpha, the Omega, my Abba Father, Jehovah God, immensely values me. Second, I want to live like a child of God. That means trusting him like a father, leaning on him, resting in the identity he has given me. Finally, I want to reflect that love to others, my wife, my children, my extended friends and family, and those I come into contact with every day. I'm asking myself this season, how can I show that same welcome and grace God has shown me? How can I show that type of love and freedom to others? It could be reaching out to someone lonely or hurting. It could be just offering forgiveness when it's really hard. Maybe it's just slowing down to truly so, show agape love to the people around me and putting other people's priorities before mine. Advent is a time to remember that we are no longer enslaved. We are free. We are no longer outsiders. We're family. And because of Jesus, we can live in that truth, that freedom, and that peace every day. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us. Thank you for sending your son born of a virgin, to die on a cross so that we can come back to you and call you Abba Father. Thank you for all that you've done for me personally. Thank you for all that you've done for my family. 
And I pray in this season of time that I would just be willing and able and open to showing agape love to all those that I come into contact with. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.